history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. From KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Breaking right now, a woman rushed to the hospital after deputies say her boyfriend shot her twice and then took off. The very latest on the search for that gunman. For breaking news, the Boy Scouts of America has filed for bankruptcy after several sexual assault lawsuits against the organization. Uh, what this could mean for your child's chapters. Early voting begins today across Texas. What you need to know before you head out to the polls to cast your ballot early for the Super Tuesday primary. Good morning. This is a Tuesday, February 18th at 4.30. I'm Owen Caplenty. Good morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. Eric is in with a check on the roads. How are we looking? We are looking good. Uh, we are crash free. We are incident free. And we don't have a lot of fog out there. I've been checking the cameras here and there. And it uh, looks like visibility is pretty good. So dry roadways. We've got a great start to your Tuesday. Which is good. Just keep it rolling. Uh, so we are tracking a little bit of fog just directly at the coast, but as Eric said, we're looking really good here in town. So two thumbs up there. Uh, temperatures are pretty mild out there. We're waking up in the 70s. So this afternoon, we're going to easily push 80 degrees as we go Whoa. to the afternoon. So there's a live look at our tower camera. Yeah, I think we got a, I think we got a microphone a problem. Oh, it's on now. No, it's yeah. on. It's on. Hey. Okay. Sometimes it's the gremlins, right? <laughs> uh, so Those there's a live. You know, they always sneak out. You feed them after it. midnight, and you look what happens. You <laughs> Don't get them wet, phone, right? <laughs> uh, so there's a live look at our tower camera. Again, it's not looking bad this morning. Uh, we have pretty clear conditions here in town. Uh, 71 degrees on the southwest side. Now, typically our afternoon temperatures would be in the 60s. So if you're waking up in the 70s, you know it's going to be a rather warm day. There's a look at the dense fog advisory. Again, it's just directly at the coast. So if you're driving along seawall you're going to see it but away from there not too bad it's light and patchy visibility at hobby airport around two miles two and a half in pearland that is a far cry from what we dealt with yesterday temperatures across the area upper 60s low 70s we're going to be pushing 80 degrees today the catch is when does the cold front actually arrive in your neighborhood the farther you live off to the north and west most likely you're staying in the 70s today if you live closer to the coast you could be pushing that 80 degree marker as the cold front is arriving later this afternoon and this evening 30 percent chance of a round of showers. Eric, coming up next, I'll take you through the timeline for our cold front and also our rain showers. Over to you.
All right, thank you very much, Britta. Happy Tuesday to you. I hope you're having a great start to your day. It's early, not many cars on the road, so as you might imagine, we've got uh, no delays happening right now. And as Britta said, down toward the coast, that's where most of the fog is. The yellow indicates areas where the fog is thicker than others. So let's take a look at things. North Freeway, this is up at the Woodlands, Woodlands Parkway, looking great. You can see all the way to the horizon. Same thing on the Southwest Freeway in the Sugarland area around Brazos River, First Colony. Yeah, looking fine. Katie Freeway at Igloo, same story. Yesterday, this was literally zero miles visibility. You couldn't even see the road yesterday, but today, no problems whatsoever through Waller County. And finally, the Gulf Freeway at Santa Fe, a little hazy there, but still in Galveston County, not looking too bad. It's the immediate coast that's the more of the problem. So your drive times, 24 minutes in from the Woodlands, 14 in from Pearland, and that Clear Lake to downtown drive on the Gulf Freeway, only 19 minutes. Drive safely out there. Have a great morning. Morning. Back to you. Okay, Eric, great. Thank you. 433. Let's go to some breaking news this morning. A woman's recovering after deputies say her boyfriend shot her twice out in the Cypress area. We're told that man then drove off, and right now police are still searching for him. This all happened at about 2 o'clock this morning on Grand Road, right near Creekway Drive, and that is where we find Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli this morning. So, Vincent, tell us what you've learned so far. Tonight, good morning. We just arrived on scene. Let me show you guys what's going on. About a dozen Harris County Sheriff's deputies are at this apartment complex, and they're paying special attention to an apartment on the first floor. We've seen them walking around using flashlights, searching for evidence. Investigators say around 2.15 this morning, a man in his early 20s opened fire on his 19-year-old ex-girlfriend. At least two bullets struck the woman. Paramedics rushed her to the hospital. She is now in serious condition. Authorities say the shooter took off in a white Jeep, leaving the crime scene. Right now, detectives are trying to track him down and figure out a motive. Why would a man shoot his ex-girlfriend? Authorities have not provided a detailed suspect description. However, I'll keep you guys updated on the story as it continues to develop. For now, reporting live in Cyprus, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Okay, Vincent, thank you. Also breaking this morning, we're learning more about the woman police say kidnapped a 10-year-old boy in West Houston yesterday. Nicole Harris is facing a kidnapping charge. She's set to appear in court any minute now. Uh, we've learned she was out on bond for a previous drug charge when the kidnapping happened. Police say Harrison, the mother's ex-girlfriend, took 10-year-old Joshua Marin for some reason from the hotel where they were staying, and that sparked the Amber Alert. Joshua, was, was, Joshua that is, was found safe and reunited with his mother. Time right now is 4.35 this morning. The Boy Scouts of America has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This move largely stems from several sexual abuse lawsuits that caused a surge in legal cost. According to the filing, the Boy Scouts headquartered in Irving has less than $50,000 in assets. But local councils are not filing for bankruptcy because they are legally separate organizations. The Boy Scouts National Chair released a statement that reads in part, on behalf of myself and the entire scouting community, I'm sorry. I'm devastated that there were times in the past when we failed the very children we were supposed to protect. The statement also encourages victims to come forward and file claims so that they can receive compensation. Last April, court testimony showed that the organization believed more than 7,800 of its former leaders sexually abused more than 12,000 children. This was over the course of 72 years. All right, now to a story you'll uh, hear only on two. A family of five uh, who moved here for a fresh start has to start all over again after a, a grease fire uh, spread from a neighboring apartment into theirs. Uh, there is some cell phone video from the fire which happened on Valentine's Day uh, at the apartment complex on Gustine and Gessler, Southwest Houston. Everything the Costco family owned was soaked or damaged by smoke or burned. They was like, Mommy, where are we going to eat? <laughs> we don't have a table. Just losing everything because it took a lot for We worked hard for everything that we have and now for it to be gone. Family says they're going to uh, stay in an empty apartment unit while they wait for their next paycheck. The man who started the fire in the first floor apartment has apparently disappeared. Apartment managers say the man at fault does not have renter's insurance. Turning now to Decision 2020. This morning, early voting begins right here in Texas for the Super Tuesday primary. You will be able to choose a Republican or Democratic ballot to vote for candidates running for president, the U.S. Senate, U.S. House, 
and district judges. But before you head to the polls, remember, you can vote at any registered polling location in Harris County, and you must bring some form of ID when you go to the polls. So if you want to vote by mail, though, the last day to apply is Friday, February 21st. Early voting ends on February 28th. If you do need some help finding voting centers near you, visit our website, clicktohouston.com. This morning, the Democratic candidates are getting ready for tomorrow's debate and this weekend's caucus in Nevada. Coming up, why they're taking aim at a candidate who's not even on the ballot in that state. And this morning, we are waking up to cloudy skies. Temperatures at 70 degrees. It's going to be a warm one, but not for long. We have some big changes on the way. And Mardi Gras weekend, well, details on your forecast coming up. And more trade rumors for the Rockets. The new players reportedly heading to Houston. We'll tell you all about that coming up. Time now, 4.38. Good morning. Uh, here's why I look at exact track radar. We're looking good here in Houston, but we're tracking a few showers up to the north. So you can see a few spotty showers moving through Grimes County and Huntsville. This is all fairly light. It's not going to slow you down too much, but we have more on the way. A cold front is arriving later this afternoon for our northwest counties here in Houston. It's not going to move through until this evening. So ahead of it, we're expecting warm and muggy conditions this afternoon, getting close to 80 degrees. Notice the temperature drop, though. By 5 p.m., we're dropping to the 50s at College Station. So that cold air is going to be arriving later tonight with the rain showers rolling through as well. So I hope you know where your jackets are. We're going to need them for tomorrow. We'll take a look at how cold it's going to get here in town coming up. Thank you, Britta. The fallout from the Astros sign-stealing scandal continues this morning as another lawsuit has been filed against the team. This one's coming from a fan, a season ticket holder. Adam Wallach is asking for a million dollars in damages. The lawsuit claims the team deceptively overcharged for season tickets while engaging in sign-stealing. The lawsuit also invites other partial and full season ticket holders to join the claim. We reached out to the Astros. They do not comment on pending legal matters. Major League Baseball has suspended Astros pitcher Francis Martez for testing positive for a performance enhancing drug. This is his second violation, which will put him on the sideline for the entire season. His previous failed test came about one year ago. This morning, ESPN's reporting more trade rumors for the Rockets. Damari Carroll from, uh, and the Spurs have agreed to a, a buyout. So ESPN says uh, Carroll will sign with the Rockets. They're also reporting the Rockets will sign free agent Jeff Green to a 10-day contract. And today is the second full uh, day of full workouts, that is, for the Houston Astros. Coming up, what they're now saying about that sign-stealing controversy as they continue to get ready for the upcoming season. And as far as your traffic goes this morning, on the east side, San Jacinto River, traffic flowing nicely. We've got good visibility over the river. Uh, find out if fog is playing a role in anyone's morning commute this morning. Plus, a current look at your drive times on this early Tuesday morning. Stay tuned. Prove this message. Good morning. Coming up on 445 on this Tuesday morning, 71 degrees out there right now. Britta will have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments. More than 300 Americans evacuated from the quarantine Diamond Princess cruise ship back here in the U.S. and now back under quarantine. But not everyone chose to leave. There are still some Americans who decided to stay on board. They were going to break that quarantine, put us all on coaches and then on planes for uh, 10 hours. And we thought we had a far better chance of catching the virus on that transference than, than we'd ever had on the ship. 14 of the people who came to the U.S. from that cruise ship tested positive for coronavirus as they were boarding the plane. Officials say none of those patients showed any symptoms. After that plane landed, some of those who tested positive or considered high risk were sent to nearby hospitals for treatment, while others flew to facilities in Nebraska. They will all be closely watched by doctors. This morning, we've learned NASCAR driver Ryan Newman is in serious condition, but we are told his injuries are not life-threatening. And it's all because of this, this really scary crash on the final lap of last night's Daytona 500. Newman was leading the pack during that last lap when he was hit by another car, sending him spinning into the wall. His car rolls, then flips, then goes airborne before getting hit by another car and landing on the roof as it erupted into flames. 
After nearly three weeks of court proceedings, jury deliberation begins today in the sexual assault trial of former Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein. The 67-year-old disgraced film producer is charged with raping a woman in a New York City hotel room in 2013 and forcibly performing oral sex on another woman in 2006. Weinstein denies the charges, saying it was all consensual. Today, jurors will receive instructions and then head into deliberations. 447. Plymouth Rock, which marks the place where pilgrims from the Mayflower landed 400 years ago, was vandalized this weekend. It's now covered in red graffiti. Several other nearby landmarks were also vandalized, including a stone bench and a statue. Massachusetts authorities haven't released much information about suspects. This year, Plymouth is celebrating the 400th anniversary of the Pilgrim's Landing. Some top stories from around the nation now. Breaking news this morning, we've learned Michael Bloomberg has just qualified for the Nevada debate. Now, he's not on the a ballot for the caucuses this week, but uh, the NBC Democratic debate airs tomorrow night right here on Channel 2 at 8, and it will be uh, moderated by uh, Lester Holt, Chuck Todd, and Hallie Jackson. Our Sion Rhodes is traveling to Nevada for it, and we'll catch her live reports beginning this afternoon here on Channel 2. Much of central Mississippi will start the day under a flash flood watch. The Pearl River crested on Monday and the water levels, well, they are expected to fall later this week. But today, the already waterlogged region is expected to get up to two more inches of rain. Thousands of homes could be impacted by this, and the state's governor continuing to urge people to heed the evacuation warnings. Officials expect the flood threat to move south along with the receding water. Wow, it's been a pretty rough for all those people out there, Britta. Mm, yeah, really sad, and there's people that will have water in their homes for over a week, which makes the recovery process that much harder. Uh, so think about them for sure. Our local weather pretty quiet, especially considering yesterday with the dense fog. It's not an issue for this morning's drive. We're only tracking some fog at the direct coastline. So if you're driving along seawall, you're going to see it. But as you push your way into Galveston County, it clears up pretty nicely. Uh, that's a live look from our Kaplan Sinus Relief camera. You can see a few raindrops out there. Uh, it's definitely a warm and muggy start. And yes, we have rain in the forecast. So a good idea to grab your umbrella before you leave your door so you're prepared throughout the day. Uh, temperature wise, it's 70 degrees here in Houston this morning. That is a very warm start. This afternoon, we'll be pushing 80 degrees. Yesterday, we were at 81. We're pumping in that southeast breeze ahead of our cold front that will be arriving later this evening for us here in Houston. But our northwest counties could see it as early as this afternoon. Right now, we're tracking a few showers moving through Grimes County and also Walker County. Here in town, maybe a few light sprinkles. The rainfall during the morning commute will not be a big factor. We're not really expecting much. But as we go throughout the day, I'll slightly increase our rain chances to about 30 percent. Most of the rain is going to be later tonight with the cold front. So during the day, we're ahead of that cold front. Warm, breezy, muggy, temperatures close to 80 degrees. Here's a look at our future cast model, getting your kids out the door. They should wear shorts and a t-shirt, but tuck that umbrella in the back of their uh, backpack. This morning, they might want a light sweater just on top, but really, it's a very mild start. As we get closer to lunchtime, low 70s. Notice that we have a few more showers, but there's the cold front itself rolling through our northwest counties between 4 and 5 o'clock. Uh, temperatures behind it, they do drop. So we're dropping to the upper 50s, low 60s. Here we're still pretty warm. We don't notice that temperature drop here in Houston until tonight. Between 8 and 10 o'clock, those temperatures will be dropping here in Harris County. Still working in those rain showers. And then Wednesday and Thursday, they look pretty sloppy. So here's a wide view of that cold front still holding off to the north and west. Again, it's arriving this evening. It's going to stall out to the south of us. And then we have all this moisture riding over it from the southwest. That creates a very drizzle Thursday, drizzle on and off, light rain showers, cloudy and cool weather, and then we'll slowly clear out as we go into Friday and the weekend. We do have a brief warm up for the weekend. We'll keep it cool in the 60s, but we're not going to be in the 50s anymore. We have beautiful sunshine in the forecast for Saturday and Sunday. For the cold front that we're anticipating between uh, this afternoon, also Wednesday and Thursday, about an inch of rainfall here in town, lower amounts of the coast, about a half an inch. Our north counties will see the largest totals with about two to three inches of rain anticipated. That's not a flooding concern, but it is going to be a very soggy Wednesday and Thursday. And look at those temperatures, Eric. A lot of rainfall with temperatures in the 50s. It's not going to be the best Thursday. Over to you.
Ah, but we'll get through it, and at least it's not a weekend day. A lot of people have the weekend off, so get it done over in the uh, weekday period. All right, we've got a little bit of fog east, southeast, out of town, but as Britt has been mentioning, it's really along the immediate coast that we've got any kind of thick fog that may reduce visibility. We're looking good in the city. We've got crash-free conditions on area roadways, a little haze here on 288. This is at airport south side of town. Maybe a little bit of a sheen on the roadway from maybe some of that mist from uh, the moisture in the atmosphere, but overall we're looking pretty good. West Loop at West Timer flowing nicely. We had an overnight closure there. Uh, we're going to have nightly closures coming up there too. We'll show you that in just one second. First of all, your drive times this morning, delay free in the green cross board. We'd like to see that. And as I mentioned, overnight closures uh, between now and March 2nd, between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. This is on the West Loop. We are getting used to this kind of a closure. We've had it for several weeks in a row. Uh, it's going to be nightly from here on out. So just remember that if this is part of uh, your neighborhood and you take this section of freeway often. Back to you guys. All right, Eric, thanks. 452. In the midst of uh, all the Astros sign stealing fallout, the team still has to focus on spring training. Here's Vanessa Richardson with more on the team's first full workout. Good morning and welcome into the Xfinity Sports Desk. Well, yesterday was the first official full squad workouts for the Astros, of course, in West Palm Beach. All the position players joining in for the next six weeks. Players spread across the backfield and agility field to get that work in. It was a first big step to get the guys together and on the same page once again. All, all, all 30 teams have a chance to go and chase a World Series and um, in every clubhouse they believe that they can win the World Series so um, the biggest challenge is playing against the best players in the world. We came a uh, couple hours to, to win a World Series so you know we're not it was frustrating in the day but it, that's a motivation for us to, to come this year and, and try to make it to the World Series again. And no shock here, the incredible Simone Biles was named the Sportswoman of the Year at the Laureus Sports Awards. Biles earned this, winning five gold medals at the World Championships and becoming the most decorated gymnast in history. Congratulations to her. And the undefeated Cy Creek Cougars taking on the Lamar Texans. First quarter, Lori Harmon puts up a three for the Cougars. But the Texans answer Haley Besqueen with the basket to even the score. Cy Creek ended up dominating this one. 91 to 22. And of course, we'll have more Astros coverage coming up later in the day. Have a great morning. Thank you, Vanessa. Time right now is 454. Here's a look at what's trending on this Tuesday. Parasite's Oscar win gave the South Korean thriller a big box office boost. Last week in the film saw a 234% increase in ticket sales. That is the biggest financial bounce for any Best Picture winner in the last 10 years. Parasite has brought in more than $44 million in ticket sales here in the U.S., which is a huge success for a foreign language film. The state of Kentucky will have to shell out more than $150,000 over a license plate that reads, I'm God. The money will go to a man who applied for the plate about four years ago, but Kentucky transportation officials said the plate didn't meet their requirements. So the ACLU and the Freedom From Religion Foundation filed a First Amendment lawsuit on the man's behalf. And now a judge is ordering the state to cover the man's attorney's fees and litigation costs. All right, it's 4.55 in the morning, maybe a little too early to grab a glass of wine. Yeah. Maybe. Just. You might feel like you want to. Though. I know, just a little bit. Well, coming up next, uh, you might see more people. We'll tell you why you might see more people drinking wine today. So it wasn't yesterday. Today's <laughs> national, my bad, drink wine day. Hey, it can't hurt you. It's celebrated. This is celebrated every year on February 18th, the day to select your favorite vintage and sip up. According to nationaldrinkwineday.org, the idea is to promote the love and health benefits of wine. And there are some health benefits of wine. I did a story, but uh, it's way less than you actually think. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 2020 Ascent Models. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. We have breaking news this morning. The woman arrested in an Amber Alert case involving a 10-year-old boy charged with kidnapping now. Nicole Harrison is set to appear in court in just a few moments. What we've learned after the boy was found safe at a motel.
Also breaking this morning, Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg now preparing for the debate in Las Vegas where he has just qualified to participate. He'll face his opponents for the very first time. Parts of southeast Texas still dealing with some patchy fog, and you're going to want to get ready for another warm day today, like really warm. It's 5 o'clock uh, right now on this, uh, let's see, the 18th. Mm -hmm. Is it Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. You got it. <laughs> Birthday tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow is. Tomorrow. Uh -huh. Last day of being 35. Hey. Let's soak it in, right? And Enjoy it. So good news there. And we're not waking up to fog. So that's a huge help. Uh, if you live directly along the coast, you are going to see it. Uh, but once you get a little, a little bit off seawall, it really doesn't take too many blocks to get away from seawall to see some improvements. But if you are waking up directly along the coast, you're under dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. So let's take you outside, show you what it looks like uh, closer to town. This is the southwest side, way better than yesterday, right? I think we can all agree on that one. So we can see the southwest freeway. Look at the temperatures on our little bug there. Uh, 71 degrees. It's a really warm start out there. We're anticipating close to 80 degrees here in town. Uh, we do have a cold front that's going to arrive later this evening, so enjoy the warm weather while we have it. Uh, here's a look at the visibility map. Again, we have some light patchy fog right around the bay in our coastal counties, but a visibility of one to two miles. It's not that bad. It's not going to be a huge factor, but directly at the coast it is rather thick, so that's where we have the dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. Meanwhile, a few scattered showers moving through our north counties. That is fairly light. We'll have more filtering in later today. Eric, I'm increasing our rain chance to about 30 percent this afternoon with temperatures getting up to the upper 70s, close to 80 degrees. I'm going to time out the cold front coming up next. Over to you. All right, 78 degrees, February. That's kind of a nice little thing. A little swampy out there this morning with the high humidity and the warmth. But uh, yeah, we could have it a lot worse, definitely. A little fog off to the southeast side of town. But as Britta mentioned, and what is the consensus opinion, um, it's looking pretty good, especially compared to yesterday. So hopefully you're having a great day. Once you step out the door into your car, onto the roadways, you should be in great shape. We're crash free right now across the board here in southeast Texas. So pretty much every freeway looks exactly like the Katy Freeway at Blaylock. No problems at all. East Texas Freeway, Aldean Bender, same story there. A little bit of a haze in the air with the high humidity, but again, visibility is looking good. And our drive times looking great in the green, delay free across the board. Back to you guys. Okay, Eric, thanks. 502. Let's go to breaking news this morning. The woman charged in the kidnapping of a 10 year old boy at the center of an Amber Alert is set to appear in court in just a few moments. Police arrested Nicole Harrison after Joshua Marin was found safe yesterday afternoon. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is in downtown Houston this morning now with the very latest on the details of this case. Taisha, good morning. Good morning. We're at the Harris County Joint Processing Center where Nicole Harrison is sitting in court right now waiting for her turn to go before a judge where a judge will determine that a crime was committed yesterday when a 10 year old boy was taken from his home to a motel sparking an Amber Alert. Take a look at 30 year old Nicole Harrison. We know that she has officially been charged with kidnapping. Prosecutors say she took her ex girlfriend's 10 year old son Joshua Marin to a hotel near Greens Point yesterday without the permission of his mother. Joshua's mother called police sparking an Amber Alert. Joshua is now back home safely this morning with his mother. As for Harrison, again, we're waiting for her to have her turn before a judge where a judge will likely find probable cause and set bond conditions. Putting life from downtown, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Okay, Taisha, thank you for the update. It's 503 now. We're tracking breaking news in the Cypress area where deputies say a woman was shot by her ex-boyfriend twice during some kind of argument. This happened around 2 in the morning on Grant Road near Creekway Drive. We're told the man drove off after that, and deputies are still searching for him. The woman was taken to the hospital where she's undergoing surgery. She is expected to survive the shooting. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli is following the story. He'll bring us a live update ahead at 5.30. New this morning, a staff member at HISD's Foster Elementary accused of indecency with a child faced a judge overnight. According to investigators, this incident happened last February. They say that a student told her mother that James Bradley touched her inappropriately on several occasions. A judge set his bond at $30,000. Also breaking news today, presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg will be on the debate stage tomorrow in Las Vegas. He qualifies after receiving 19% of support in a recent poll done by uh, NPR and PBS NewsHour and Marist. So it puts him in second place at a poll behind Bernie Sanders. This will be Mike Bloomberg's first appearance in a Democratic presidential primary debate.
Uh, Houston Astros pitcher Francis Martez will not be on the field as the team continues full squad workouts. He's been suspended uh, after testing positive for performance enhancing drugs. This is his second violation, which will put him on the sideline for the whole season. He uh, previously failed a test a year ago. Coming up at 5.30, Channel 2 Sports Director Randy McElvoy will bring us the latest from West Palm as spring training continues. We have an update on a deadly head-on crash in Liberty County that killed four people. Family members identified one of the victims as Alfredo Gordy Queller. Dayton police say that a man driving on Highway 146 near Brown Road veered into oncoming traffic and crashed right into another truck there. Both drivers and two passengers were killed. Another vehicle was also hit, but that driver was not injured. Investigators tell us they do not believe that weather was a factor. Time right now is 5.06 this morning. Only on two, a family who moved to Houston from New York to get a fresh start in life, well, they are now starting over all again. A grease fire at a neighboring apartment spread to theirs, destroying their belongings. A neighbor took this cell phone video of that fire that happened on Valentine's Day. Everything the Cosgrove family owned was soaked, damaged by smoke, or burned. I'm still wearing the same clothes, you know, from this fire, and I really don't know what to do at this moment. Only thing I could say is, you know, I just pray to God that somebody do help me and my family. The family says the man who started that fire in the first floor apartment has now disappeared. Apartment managers say the man at fault does not have renter's insurance. Only on two this morning, local audio video technicians in a tight spot, all because of some thieves that stole his equipment. It happened at a storage facility in Cyprus. The thieves hooked up the trailer, which was filled with his equipment, and uh, they hooked it up to their truck and took off. Jason Lapasinskis says the trailer was worth about $6,000. Some of the items inside, though, he says were priceless. I was uh, nauseous. Um, I had a lot of equipment in the trailer. A lot of it was um, custom built personally by me. Um, things that I can probably never get back or will have to make again. The theft has forced Lapisinskis to cancel at least one gig because he can't afford to replace all the stolen items. If you recognize the truck in the surveillance picture or you see the trailer out there, call the Harris County Precinct 4. 507, in the future of space, a mission to resupply the space station is now finished. Astronaut Andrew Morgan controlled the robotic arm to capture the Cygnus cargo spacecraft. More than 7,500 pounds of supplies and experiments was on board that rocket. Well, they're usually good boys who just want to want you to throw the ball, but one guy caused quite the public interruption. And that's right, ahead at five, the moment a dog ran on the field during a soccer match, and how one of the players eventually stepped in. Aw, he's so cute. I like the guest player. Uh, this morning, we're looking pretty good. So here's a live look at the Southwest Freeway. We can see it, so bonus there. Fog is not going to be a huge issue for the morning commute. And we're waking up at 70 degrees, a really warm and muggy start to the day. We'll talk about your afternoon temperatures and also the return of winter. Cold fronts on the way. All right, Britta, thanks. Thanks for following up on uh, some reports of two new rockets making their way to H-Town. 508 here at Channel 2. Hey, good morning to you. It is Tuesday, and I hope you're having a great start to the day. It is humid outside. It's kind of hazy, but we don't have big fog problems out there. This is 288 behind me. The Houston Transtar folks are trying to find something on the camera. Not sure what they're looking for, but they're moving around a little bit. 288 is looking good this morning. Not many people out on the roadways. 10 minutes into town from the Pearland area. So, yeah, we could do a lot worse. Roadways clear in every direction around town. We are in the green delay free north south, east to west. Britta. Uh, great way to start the day. Uh, you do want to grab your umbrella today. We have a few showers happening right now, mainly off to the northwest of downtown, but we have more that will be moving in later this afternoon as a cold front is rolling through Dallas right now. Uh, let's take you off uh, to the northwest side of Harris County. We have a few light sprinkles, nothing that should slow you down too much, but again, we have more rain in the forecast for later today. Meanwhile, steadier rainfall right now over Montgomery and Lake Conroe. That's moving into New Waverly and will continue to push off to the northeast. I want to pause the clock at school drop off. 
make sure your kids are prepared for a really warm and muggy day. Drop off temperatures around 70 degrees. A good idea to have an umbrella because as we go into the afternoon, closer to after school pickup, we'll have some more showers pushing in. That's when the cold front is moving into our northwest counties. We'll talk about what that is going to bring to us here in Houston coming up. Tanaya? Thank you, Britta. The Rockets might be getting two new teammates. Well, there's multiple reports that the Rockets have signed forwards Damari Carroll and Jeff Green. Around the same time the news was breaking, Carroll tweeted, stay positive, keep grinding every day. He currently plays for the Spurs, who reportedly agreed to a contract buyout. Green was a free agent. Early voting for primary elections in Texas begin today. So coming up, what you're going to see on the ballot when you head to the polls and how to find the closest place near you. It's 512. Today. Good morning time right now is coming up on 515 on a Tuesday live look outside. Britta will have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments. To Decision 2020 this morning, we're going to see one more Democrat on the debate stage tomorrow night in Las Vegas. That breaking news we first brought you at 430 is that Michael Bloomberg now qualifying for that debate, meaning this will be the first time he'll face his opponents. NBC's Tracy Potts has more. Mr. Bloomberg, like anybody else, has a right to run for president. He does not have a right to buy the presidency. Democrats are taking aim at billionaire Michael Bloomberg's stop and frisk policy as mayor of New York City and decades of lawsuits from female employees. He denies any surprise, wrongdoing. Surprise. Michael Bloomberg with $62 billion can buy every ad he wants, but he can't, in fact, wipe away his record. We have exactly one shot. All the candidates are spamming Nevada's airwaves with 20,000 ballots already cast in early voting and lines up to two hours long. It is time for a wealth tax in America. <laughs> Senators Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar are hoping to do some catch up here while the man with the most delegates focuses on President Trump. A campaign message that says that you either got to be for the revolution or you must be for the status quo. Most of us don't know where we fit in that picture. I'm here to draw a bigger picture, one where all of us can belong. The president heads west today, hitting four states, including Nevada. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Thank you, Tracy. Tomorrow night, you can watch the Democratic presidential primary debate right here on Channel 2. The two-hour debate in Las Vegas starts at 8 o'clock. Channel 2 anchor Sion Rhodes is traveling to Nevada for the debate. We'll catch her live reports on air and online at click2houston.com. Uh, early voting for the March 3rd primary here in Texas uh, begins today. This year's primary ballot includes much more than just the presidential primary. Voters will weigh in on congressional, legislative, judicial, and state board of education primaries. Uh, in Harris County, polling locations will be open from 7 to 7 each day, except Sunday, February 23rd, when the polls are open 1 to 6. You can find a voting place near you at click2houston.com. Time right now is 517 on this Tuesday morning. Two victims who accuse a former Conroe priest of sexual abuse have filed a federal lawsuit against the Vatican in the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston. The lawsuit claims that the Vatican allowed Manuel La Rosa Lopez to be ordained even though church leaders were aware of earlier accusations of abuse. We did reach out to the Archdiocese for a response. In it, they said in part, we take these allegations very seriously and continue to pray for all of the victims of sexual abuse. The accusers are seeking $20 million in damages. Beginning today, jury deliberations in the Harvey Weinstein trial. After the judge gives his instructions, jurors will head into the deliberating room. Uh, the 67-year-old disgraced film producer is charged with raping a woman in a New York City hotel room in 2013 and sexually assaulting another woman in 2006. Weinstein denies the charges and says the contact was consensual. Right now, parts of central Mississippi under a flash flood watch. It is expected to remain in effect for the rest of the day. Now, this all comes as the swollen Pearl River crested at its third highest record level, forcing hundreds of people near Jackson to leave their homes and search for higher ground. Some residents have stayed as long as they could, but they eventually had to call neighbors for help. It's really been overwhelming. I'm mean, really just kind of thinking about it. I get I broke it up over it. It's, it's, it's such a good feeling to have so many friends and family. Did let her help it out. 
The rain is expected to return to that area today and at least through tomorrow, dumping as much as two inches of rain over the already water-soaked Jackson. It's 519. A soccer-loving dog stole the show at a Turkish soccer match. Take a look. Very furry, very adorable. Aww. And uh, just great timing, too. <laughs> look at him. It's like, I'm ready. Tail wagging out on the field. They're like, hold on, we, we, got, a, we got a match to finish, guy. They tried to roll the ball off to the sidelines, and <laughs> he goes. wasn't having it. He's like, no, no, come on, guys, we want to play. And he uh, kicked it right back onto the field after that. The fans were loving Aww. it, too. <laughs> Finally, he's like, uh, anybody? Anybody? We get this. Is this your dog? Get this pup out of here. <laughs> we gotta, can we check the microchip? Anyway, it was, uh, that was a fun moment there. We don't know which teams were playing. None of that matters. It's just no, the cuteness. It's That's a all cute that matters. Dog. That <laughs> Gotta love dogs. They're just so sweet. They <laughs> are so Always sweet. so happy. Man. All right, coming up on 520, it's, uh, at least it's not as foggy as it has yes. been around the area. No, we've got a nice quiet start. Roadways are all looking good, no crashes, and yeah, you can see. Yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> Which it is makes a, plus. a huge difference, right? <laughs> uh, we only have one spot where we're dealing with fog. It's literally directly at the coast. If you're away from the coast, you're looking pretty good. Uh, you do want to grab your umbrella, though. We're expecting a few showers later today. In fact, we're tracking a few on Exact Track Radar this morning. This is a live look uh, over downtown from our Kaplan Sinus mm -hmm. Relief camera. It's overcast. We're not going to see much this morning. Uh, we are expecting a rather cloudy day, and it's going to be a warm one. In fact, temperatures right now 71 degrees. I mean, our typical afternoon high right now is in the mid-60s, so you know if we're starting off this warm, it's going to be a warm afternoon. Yesterday, we hit 81 degrees. Today, we're going to be pushing 80 degrees. We have a few scattered showers moving through Montgomery County, moving up towards Lake Livingston. Also see these showers getting close to El Campo. Those eventually will work their way through Harris County. They're still at least an hour away, but a good reminder that you do want your umbrella with you. We're expecting temperatures to be in the upper 70s today. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few communities reach 80 degrees. About a 30% chance of rainfall, especially as we go to the afternoon. Those rain chances will start to increase because the cold front's going to be getting closer. Right now, it's rolling through Dallas. I want to pause the clock for school drop-off. Uh, shorts and t-shirts for the kids today. Tuck the umbrella in the back of their backpack. You might see a little bit of a light sprinkle or mist on the way to school, but you have a higher chance of running into rain as we get into the afternoon. This is lunchtime. Temperatures in the low 70s for after school pickup. That's when we could see a few more showers, especially off to the north and west. By 5 p.m., the cold front's on the way. And look at that temperature drop 59 degrees behind the front. We're still in the mid to upper 70s to the south of that here in Houston. So we'll feel that temperature drop here in Houston. And that's happening between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight. We'll bring in those scattered showers, even rumbles of thunder are possible tonight. And then Wednesday and Thursday are looking pretty sloppy. This cold front that's right now in Dallas is going to stall out to the south of us and we're going to ride in all that Pacific moisture on top of it. So when that moisture rides over that cooler air, you create a very light drizzle, light rainfall, cloudy skies, and really chilly temperatures. So it's going to be a dreary Wednesday and Thursday. I think Thursday is looking pretty soggy, but by Friday into the weekend, we dry out. We do have a slight warm up. Uh, it's still going to be cool in the 60s, but at least it won't be cold as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Uh, between this evening, also Thursday and Friday, we're anticipating about inch of rainfall here in Houston. The farther north you live, the higher your rainfall totals are going to be. Two, three inches of rain expected for our north counties. That is not going to create flooding concerns, but it is going to be a little bit of a wet go. Take a look at that nice rebound, though. Beautiful weather for Mardi Gras weekend. Eric? All right, Britta, thank you very much for that. Looking forward to a nice little weekend here. All right, time saver traffic. Uh, it is Tuesday. Roadways are crash free. We like that. Uh, it's always good to report good news like that. So let's take a look at the way things shape up on the east side of town. If you're heading in from the Baytown area, it's looking green on I-10, the East Freeway, through the Beltway, into the Loop, and it's 16 minutes, in fact, to downtown. So we like what we're seeing outside right now. Hopefully we can keep it up. One stall vehicle. This is e eastbound, I should say, outbound on the I-10 East Freeway at Freeport. Uh, it's on the shoulder, so it's not affecting main lanes, but you may need to tap on your brakes as you're going by it. Another stalled vehicle westbound on the Katy Freeway North Post Oak outside of the main lane. So again, no big problems there. And our final stop, North Freeway FM 1960. Looking good. We're looking at a 25-minute ride in from the Woodlands area, and your overall drive times continue to be in the green across the board. Drive safely out there. Back to you. Eric, thank you. California's legislature is expected to approve a bill apologizing for the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. 
President Roosevelt authorized the incarcerations in 1942. Many of them were U.S. citizens. It was the largest forced relocation in U.S. history. Almost 80 years later, California State Assembly is set to approve the resolution apologizing for the detentions and failing to defend civil rights. So, are you a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of person? Well, it could matter when it comes to your relationships, how being more optimistic can actually help your partner. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. The heart health of pregnant women is not where it should be across the board. Find out how poor health could determine your baby's risk for cardiovascular disease later in their life. New research from Michigan State University suggests having a partner who is optimistic can help your memory as you age. These scientists studied more than 4,000 heterosexual couples ages 50 and older. They were given a questionnaire and memory test every two years over an eight year period. The results from the study suggest more optimistic people had better cognitive functioning and people in relationships with an optimistic person. Well, that may help you avoid cognitive decline as you age. So something to think about there. It has been 20 years since the Los Angeles Zoo has welcomed a new baby gorilla. That is until Saturday. Look at this. A critically endangered Western lowland gorilla was born. Experts saying this historic birth is a step forward for the species conservation. This morning on Today, an adorable exclusive look behind the scenes with this baby and its 25-year-old mother. Straight ahead on Channel 2 News today, we are hearing from American passengers who were evacuated from a quarantine cruise ship in Japan. Coming up, how many tested positive after landing in San Antonio, where they are now. And that area road this morning, uh, looking good. East Beltway, Wood Forest Boulevard South, flowing beautifully north to south, south to north. Yeah, we'd like to see that. We will talk about any potential problems out there, plus your current drive times. It's all coming up at the bottom of the hour. And great to actually see the roadways on Eric's cameras this morning. Fog is not a huge issue, but we are tracking one spot waking up to fog. Also, grab your umbrellas. Showers are in the forecast. Details coming up. Arts. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Breaking this morning, deputies are searching for the man they believe shot his ex-girlfriend. What we've learned from the Harris County Sheriff's Office, we are live from the scene in the Cypress area. A fiery end to the Daytona 500. NASCAR fans and racers offering support after a driver who was in the lead crashed out right before the finish line. How he's doing this morning. Breaking overnight, the Boy Scouts of America files for bankruptcy. What the Texas-based organization is saying as it deals with sexual abuse allegations. And there is no fire, no flame, and no fuel, but this as-seen-on-TV product claims to rival any lighter. We're trying it out this Test It Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. 531 on a Tuesday. I'm Tanaya Wright. I'm Owen Complenty. Good morning. Eric Braith, how are we doing out there? We are doing beautifully out there. Hopefully we can hold on to this for the rest of the morning. We uh, don't have the big pro fog problem we had yesterday. Uh, roadways are pretty dry across the board, so yeah, we're looking good. Yeah, we just got to keep it exactly. going. <laughs> Can we get exactly. through 8.30? We'll be good to go. Uh, so we are tracking a little bit of rainfall this morning. A good idea to have your umbrella with you because rain chances, they're going up this afternoon. A cold front is on the way. Meanwhile, it's really warm ahead of that cold front. <laughs> 70 degrees? Are you kidding me? It's February. Uh, so here's a live look at our tower camera. Uh, the best news is you can see the Southwest Freeway. We do have some sh showers, pardon me, that are quickly approaching you. Uh, they're leaving the El Campo area. So those are going to be crossing into Fort Bend County over the next hour or so. Meanwhile, we're tracking some rain in Lake Livingston. Nothing that should slow you down too much, but it's a taste of what is yet to come. We are tracking some fog in our coastal counties. It's light and patchy in the counties themselves, but as you get to the direct coastline, it starts to drop dramatically. So we do have a dense fog advisory just directly along the coast until 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so right along Seawall, you're going to notice that. Meanwhile, this afternoon, Eric, we're pushing 80 degrees ahead of the cold front, a 30% chance of rainfall. I'll give you the exact timeline of that cold front and when the temperature drops will here happen here in Houston coming up over to you all right good to know Britta 
Yeah, near 80 degrees today. That's kind of crazy. All right, take a look at our traffic map. A lot of green. We'd like to see that. We do have some yellow here, too. That indicates fog, as Britta mentioned. It's really confined to the immediate coast. So if you're in the Galveston area, you might be dealing with it. But inland, not a big problem. 610 loop looking good. North to south, east to west. North loop at Fulton, typically very, very congested during the heart of the rush hour. Not so much right now. East loop, same thing. And if we go to the south, the west loop, exactly the same picture. Inbound drive times, all our major arteries are delay free right now. A short 11 minute drive in from Pearland and UKD commuters, 22 minutes in from Mason Road to downtown. Drive safely out there today. Thank you, Eric. Now to some breaking news this morning. Deputies are scouring through Cyprus trying to find a man who they believe shot his ex-girlfriend. This is happening off of Grant Road and Creekway Drive. Our Vincent Crivelli is covering the story live for us this morning. Vincent, how is the woman doing? Oh, and good morning. I just got an update. Detectives say the woman was shot multiple times. Right now she's in surgery and is expected to survive. This is the working theory. Detectives say the 20 year old woman lives here. Her ex boyfriend, a man in his early 20s, came over and they began arguing on this balcony. Then, for some reason, the ex boyfriend opened fire, shooting the woman multiple times. Upon arrival, they found a 20 year old female who had multiple gunshot wounds. Bullets struck her stomach and legs. As deputies rushed to the scene, detectives believe the shooter took off in a white Jeep, fleeing the crime scene. The gunfire erupted around 2.15 this morning. Now investigators are searching for evidence, trying to track down the trigger man. We have leads, but I'm not going to, you know, give you the suspect's information right at this point uh, because it's still under investigation. So no detailed suspect description. Right now, authorities are trying to figure out a motive for the shooting. Stay tuned. Reporting live in Cyprus, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. We've got some breaking developments in a kidnapping case that we first told you about yesterday afternoon. A 10-year-old boy is now safe after an Amber Alert, and the woman charged in that case just faced a judge. Investigators took Nicole Harrison into custody and reunited that child with his mother after the two were found at a West Houston motel. This morning, a judge set her bond at $30,000. According to court documents, Harrison was out on felony bond at the time for a drug possession charge. Police say Harrison is the mother's ex-girlfriend. The boy's mother called police to report Harrison and her son missing yesterday morning, sparking that Amber Alert. Channel 2's Taisha Walker was in court when Harrison faced a judge this morning and will join us coming up live with an update still ahead at 6. Also breaking, the Boy Scouts of America, headquartered in Irving, has filed for bankruptcy, halting a growing number of lawsuits from former scouts alleging sexual abuse. Uh, in a statement released overnight, the organization's president said, quote, while we know nothing can undo the tragic abuse that victims suffered, we believe the Chapter 11 process with the proposed trust structure will provide equitable compensation to all victims while maintaining the Boy Scouts of America's important mission. According to the filing, the Boy Scouts has $50,000 or less in assets, but liabilities between $100 million and $500 million. All abuse cases filed against the organization will be halted and moved to federal bankruptcy court for settlement. New this morning, police are investigating a possible robbery after a man was found shot at least nine times in southwest Houston. We're told officers found the 23-year-old victim applying pressure to his gunshot wounds just before midnight at a home on Redding near Bel Air. That man was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. According to police, the man claims to be the victim of a robbery. However, his version of events is somewhat inconsistent, they say. So far, police have no suspect information. They do plan on speaking with a man at the hospital. It's 536, not a story you'll see only on two. Policies are changing at local pizza shops because thieves have been targeting the delivery drivers. Channel 2 has confirmed at least four of these recent attempts in the Copperfield area. Two of them were successful. In most of the cases, the robbers take down a for sale sign at a home, then they call in a bogus order and they wait for the delivery person to arrive and basically ambush them. A pizza shop manager who didn't want to share his identity says, if you place an order, prepare for a follow-up phone call. We're going to call back all of our first-time customers. We're not going to send orders out if we're not able to get in touch with somebody to confirm the details of the order. Our delivery drivers are going to continue to stay vigilant and, uh, you know, report anything suspicious while they are out there. 
Uh, some others are, are turning to safe delivery apps that would track the driver's location and give them a panic button in case something's going wrong. 537, NASCAR driver Ryan Newman is at a Florida hospital this morning after a crazy finish at the Daytona 500. He was leading when they made the final turn on the final lap and his car flipped, skidded across the line uh, uh, um, uh, on the roof and then, and then uh, erupted in flames. He's in serious condition, but doctors have indicated his injuries are non-life-threatening. We appreciate your thoughts and prayers and ask that you respect the privacy of Ryan and his family during this time. Uh, NASCAR also says they'll continue to work with the race team and Ryan's family to support them. The San Antonio mayor is reminding Texans the risk to the public remains low as Joint Base San Antonio Lackland houses cruise ship passengers. The U.S. health officials say of the 151 passengers, seven of them tested positive for the coronavirus, and those passengers were redirected to Nebraska. Several others tested positive on another flight that landed in California. They're even more frustrated after being quarantined for two weeks on that ship waiting hours to board the planes, and then enduring a 10-hour flight back to the U.S. They have sent over a dozen emails assuring us that there would not be an additional quarantine. And they just told us that we'd be re-quarantined for 14 more days. Some American passengers actually refused to leave the ship, saying they thought they had a better chance at catching the virus on the plane with everyone else. Time right now, 539. They were deceptively overcharging. That's what a season ticket holder is claiming in a class action lawsuit against the Astros amid the team's sign stealing fallout. The court documents were filed last Friday by a man named Adam Wallach. He says he was a season ticket holder between 2017 and 2020. Uh, and because of the scandal, uh, the team put a quote, deficient product on the field which he says has resulted in the devaluation of the tickets. So Wallach is demanding more than $1 million in damages, claiming the Astros had a responsibility to uphold the rules of baseball. Sports director Randy McAvoy has been in West Palm for spring training following all of this. And he spoke with uh, Altuve and Correa, who defended Altuve uh, and some other teammates after the Dodgers outfielder Cody Bellinger criticized the uh, World Series win in 2017. You know, I, I really think uh, Carl, the thing I thought before, Carlos a great thing, mate, what he did, go out there and defend their teammates, it's, it's amazing. That's, that's the only thing I, I have to say. Are you are you offended, upset, obviously, about what Bellinger had to say? Well, I have not uh, nothing to say okay. uh, about, about him at all. Now the full squad is getting ready to face the Nationals this Saturday in the first spring training game. Randy spoke with some of the other guys about how they'll work together going forward in 2020. Hello from West Palm Beach, Florida and Astros spring training. A new look here in camp today as position players arrive for the start of full squad workouts. Several of the veteran Astro players have been in and out the past few days, but this is where it counted, in uniform and putting in the work together. These guys are a tight-knit bunch, and that bond is crucial to the 2020 season. Uh, we have such a close group here and, you know, such a you know, great group of guys that are not only, you know, great baseball players, but great people. Carlos Correa is here at camp in the best shape of his life. Correa altered his offseason with a strict diet and a workout regimen he hopes will produce a healthy, injury-free season. I think just just being formed and, and, and knowing what's, what's, what's good to strengthen my back and, and my whole body and be able to be stable and, uh, and go out there and, so I can go out there and perform. Also, George Springer is coming off a monster season in 2019, but now is in the final year of his contract. He was asked about that. I'm not really focusing on, on that right now. I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating on trying to play baseball and, and you know, doing whatever it is I have to do, um, you know, to help us win. Workouts will continue all week. Their first exhibition game Saturday right here against the Washington Nationals. In West Palm Beach, Florida, Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. Thank you, Randy. Coming up next, this crazy smash and grab. Thieves carry out their plan driving a stolen minivan straight through a restaurant, but they weren't done doing damage. What happened after this? Time right now, 542. 
The restaurant owner dealing with quite the mess right now, trying to figure out how much money, if any, some brazen thieves got away with. So they smashed through the place in a stolen minivan, then they moved on to a, a pickup truck. This was all caught on video. Littleton, Colorado, there they go, smashing through in a van, then two people in hoodies jump out, they go straight for the ATM and the cash register. Then they back up a truck. While they're going for the cash, they try to get the ATM and haul that away. Uh, they think there was a getaway driver outside with the truck, and police are looking through that minivan there for evidence. Taylor Swift's father saying, look what you made me do, after he found someone trying to break into his $4 million penthouse. Coming up, who T. Swift's dad had to fight off, and why the guy's mother says it was just a misunderstanding. Mm, hey, can your lighter light a candle in the wind and the rain? The makers of the atomic lighter say this one can. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis. We're going to put it to the test coming up. All right there, Elton John. Good morning, everyone. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Night owls might impact your child's weight. Find out how early bedtimes may benefit their health next. Time now, 545. Six experts. Good morning, I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Here's this morning's health headlines. Less than one in 10 pregnant women have a good heart. This month is American Heart Month and a new report is looking at women's heart health during pregnancy. It looked at 1,000 expectant moms and found just 5% had high cardiovascular health. 60% were considered moderate and 35% Poor. Not only putting moms at risk, but also their unborn children. Health experts say expectant moms should speak to their doctors. The maternal environment as the baby grows and develops can actually program the baby's later cardiovascular health. So you can think of it as sort of writing a computer program that then runs throughout the baby's life and determines that baby's subsequent risk for cardiovascular disease after they become an adult. Heart health was worse among younger pregnant women and African Americans. However, the study's authors say more research is needed to understand why. Parents of young kids, listen up. Letting your little ones stay up too late could actually have harmful effects on their weight. Researchers in Sweden monitored more than 100 preschool-aged children's sleeping habits. They found kids with later bedtimes had larger increase in body mass index and waist size, no matter how many hours they slept. The risk of weight gain was even greater among children who had overweight parents. And before you brush your teeth, are you doing it right? Ahead at 640, the things dentists say most people do not do correctly and the habits that you should change today before you permanently damage your teeth. But by all means, still brush your still teeth. Still brush in, in any form. <laughs> you just might want to listen to this story first. Yes, looking for some good tips. Right. Thank you, Haley. Let's go to Britta with a check on our forecast. Britta, it's February and it's 71 right now. Right? 71 <laughs> degrees. So we typically would sit in the mid-60s for our afternoon highs. This is a very warm start to the day. We have overcast skies. I know it's kind of hard to see much on our camera shot, uh, but downtown is out there somewhere. We're at 71 degrees uh, here in town, upper 60s in Galveston. Our winds are coming in right off the Gulf, so that's pumping in all that heat and humidity. Uh, you do want to grab your umbrella today. We have a few showers this morning working their way over Lake Livingston. And I'm also tracking a band of showers from El Campo stretching up towards Rosenberg. You're going to see some wet pavement along the Grand Parkway as well as 59. And these are pushing out to the east. So they'll continue to roll through Harris County and then eventually Brazoria County. The rainfall this morning shouldn't slow you down too much, but just be prepared for the wet pavement. Fog is not an issue away from the coast, but at the coast, we still have that dense fog advisory in effect until 10 o'clock this morning. Our rain chances, they're only going up. So we have a cold front moving through Dallas right now. That's arriving later this evening. And that's why we're expecting those rain chances to be going up late this afternoon. Getting the kids out the door, just be prepared for that warm and muggy start. A few of you might see a few light rain showers, but there's a higher chance of you encountering those rain showers for after school pickup. Just have that umbrella with you. As we get closer to the evening commute, uh, we're still dealing with a chance of showers here in town, but the cold front's arriving in our northwest counties. Look at the temperature drop. We dropped to the 50s behind the front. We're expecting that temperature drop here in Harris County to happen between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight. Once that cold front rolls through, and right now it's right about here in Dallas, it's going to stall out to the south of us. Over that cold front, we ride in all this moisture from the Pacific, and that creates a really sloppy Thursday. We're expecting drizzle, light rainfall, cool temperatures. Uh, today's definitely going to be the warmest day out of the bunch, and then you're going to notice that dramatic drop. We're expecting about an inch of rain here, two to three inches for our north county. So again, no flooding concern, but a 
pretty inconvenient and a pretty sloppy Wednesday, Thursday on the forecast, and then we'll cool things down and clear out the skies. Eric? All right, kind of a topsy turvy forecast, but you know what? Not that bad. Time saver traffic now. Traffic is looking good. We continue to be crash free here at 551, so good news if you're leaving the house shortly. A lot of green on the map, which is exactly what we like to see. So take a look at some of our Houston Transtar cameras. The biggest problems we've got a couple of stalled vehicles. One right here, East Loop, southbound at Clinton. Traffic is a little bit congested here, but this is not in the main lane, so it's not causing any delays. You may need to tap on your brakes when you head by. Uh, vehicle like this, but otherwise no problems. East X Freeway at Franklin looking good as you head into downtown. Roadways are dry. Visibility is good out there and we are problem free. Southwest Freeway Hillcroft uh, flowing nicely in both directions. 24 minutes right now in from the Sugarland area and your inbound drive times continue to be delay free across the board around Houston. Drive safely out there. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. Whether you're lighting birthday candles or perhaps a stogie, <laughs> you need a lighter that works. <laughs> or, or your grill. Uh, your, on, what on, if, on yeah. Tuesday, Amy Davis has this lighter that's got no flame. It needs no fuel, and they say it's better than the Bix and anything else out there. Yeah, they say it is. It's the atomic lighter. And tonight I said, oh, it's kind of heavier than uh, yeah. I thought. It's rechargeable with a USB, and it cost us $19.88 at Walmart. If it works as well as they claim, your regular Bic is no match. Now harness the power of lightning in the palm of your hand. The atomic lighter uses dramatic sound effects to sell you on. The secrets are lightning bolt technology. I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to work out. John Ellie's not easily excitable, but he was up for a test of the product. Well, I was wondering how it would light something that won't fit in between those two little prongs. Something like a cigar. Ellie huffed and he puffed. The atomic lighter was not fast. It was hard to get the whole end of the cigar into its electric arc. I'd probably just use a regular gas lighter with a flame. Yeah. I think it would probably be a little quicker and, and a little less fiddly. Unlike feeble, pathetic lighters that blow out with a whisper, this thing will never let you down, even during the windiest rainstorm. We had to make our own wind. Okay, here we go and rain and ellie brought the jokes see if we can light a candle in the wind and channel elton john the lighter did hold up to a strong breeze from this fan there we go even lighting a paper towel this is our rain we've got simulated rain and the arc stayed lit even in our rainstorm i don't know that you could do that with a with a zippo or a or a bic lighter when the lighter loses its charge you simply recharge it with a usb well i think it lives up to its promise it's a workable lighters. The atomic lighter outstands wind, well, rain, and Ellie's office is still standing. Thank goodness no one called OSHA. For that, Ellie gives it all. No, I think thumbs up. <laughs> all right, the only thing Ellie did not light his light the like the lighter for was his cigars. Yeah, which makes but, sense. Yeah, he thought it would be a handy gadget to have in his vehicle. It's a good backup. It. I mean, but lighting a cigar is also like an art form. Exactly. How you light a cigar. Yeah, it's it just you work. need to get you need the a flame. flame to the you actual, actual cigar. cigar. Yeah, and, and I was like, it's okay if we show all this in your in your office conference room, right? Like He's nobody's like, gonna yes. get in trouble. Sprinklers like, didn't go off. Anymore. I know, no, they didn't. Yeah. Okay. Hey, oh. all is safe. Hey. It's for Tested Tuesday. Right. <laughs> Had to do it. Thank Thanks. you, Amy. Twenty bucks though. Well, put a pigeon and a chihuahua together for some photos. <laughs> Look at them. And what have you got? A viral duo. Where they are and how this friendship started. Oh, here's something I got for you tonight at 10. The future of trucking is driverless. Autonomous trucks don't text, they don't drive drowsy, they don't drive distracted. That's right, self-driving semis on Texas highways. But are drivers ready for it? I would not feel comfortable, but I think the technology is definitely going to be there. We're telling you what the companies are doing here in Texas and if truck drivers should be worried about losing their jobs. Coming up tonight at 10. Trending just before six, a rather unique friendship has formed in Hilton, New York. Look at these guys between a pigeon and a chihuahua. The two have been having some fun being roommates at the Mia Foundation, which is a nonprofit that helps animals with special needs and birth defects. Lundy is a chihuahua puppy who can't walk. Herman is a pigeon and he can't fly. One of the owners decided to take some pictures of the adorable duo and they have since gained the attention of millions of people all around the world. 
Just from the simple picture of a pigeon and a, and a puppy being shared, um, we've already brought in over $6,000 in donations. That's amazing. The pigeon and puppies bond is a lesson that no matter the species or ability, true friendship can form at any moment. Disney just put in for the copyright. Yeah, I'm the sure Pigeon they and the did. Puppy movie coming up. Uh, San Francisco Startup is uh, utilizing design and technology to make better use of the space in small apartments and condos. The company, Bumblebee, takes your bed, your books, your closet, puts it all up into the ceiling. You talk into your smartphone and your clothing descends. The company says it's working on designing both rentals and condos people can own, all small, but with those hidden benefits. They say it won't add much to the cost because you'll uh, be able to live in a smaller space. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Uh, breaking news this morning, the woman at the center of a Houston Amber Alert appears in court, what we've learned this morning, about the suspect in the kidnapping of a 10-year-old boy. More breaking news this morning, Michael Bloomberg makes the cut for tomorrow's debate. What's next for the New York Democrat as the candidates make their way to Nevada? Patchy fog along the coast, otherwise a beautiful start to this Tuesday, but the change is in the air. Britta will tell us all about it. And it was a scary night for Taylor Swift's father. What happened when he caught a would-be burglar breaking into his home and what the suspect's mother is saying about her son? All right, we've got the Tuesday the 18th of February at 6 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Owen Complenti. Good morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. Eric is in with a check of the roads. How are we looking? We're looking good so far. We continue to be accident-free out there. We've got uh, much less fog this morning than what we had yesterday morning, and the roadways are dry, so conditions are good. It's super warm out there, very <laughs> kind of swampy, warm and humid. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't feel like February out there, but overall conditions look good. Yeah, swampy. and if you prefer the non-swampy version of Houston, don't worry it's on the way uh, this time tomorrow we're talking about a big cool down so I hope you remember where your winter coat is you are going to need it not today though 70 degrees really it's February uh, so this afternoon we're gonna be pushing 80 degrees we were at 81 degrees yesterday now we are tracking mainly dry roads across town but we have a few showers pushing in from the west we're gonna see more as we go to the afternoon so grab your umbrella so you're prepared right now we have some showers that are leaving the Lake Livingston area also tracking some rain right along the southwest freeway so this is pushing, I don't know, closer to Mission Bend, and then that is eventually going to continue to push in to Houston. In addition to those scattered showers, we have some patchy fog at the coast directly at the coastline itself. It does drop, which is why we do have a dense fog advisory just for the islands until 10 o'clock this morning. Expect a lot of clouds today. It's going to be warm, muggy, and breezy. And I'll increase our rain chance to about 30% as we go into the afternoon when our temperatures will be pushing 80 degrees. Coming up next, Eric, I'm going to time out that cold front, let you know when you can expect that temperature drop. All right, very good time for time saver traffic, and yeah, overall not bad. Take a look at what's going on on the uh, 610 loop. North, south, east to west, it is green. So yeah, six o'clock in the morning, this is what we expect. But as the morning rush goes on, we're gonna start to see a little bit more of the way of yellows and reds on area roads. We see that right now on 146. This is in the Baytown area. We've got some construction over Alexander Drive. So a bit of a backup there. And things are starting to slow down a little bit on the Gulf Freeway inbound 27 miles per hour. You can see uh, actually not Highway 288 at airport, but the Gulf Freeway is a touch slow. Overall though, things looking good. That 288 drive in from Pearland, uh, we're flowing nicely out there, but enjoy it while it lasts because it's not going to last for too much longer. Quick look at your inbound drive times, and we're seeing a touch of a delay from Pearland, maybe a minute or two. That's it. 25 minutes in from Sugarland, that Gulf Freeway drive in from Nassau Road 1 is only going to take you 22 minutes. Drive safely out there. You're looking good so far this morning. Eric, thanks. So we have breaking news at 6.02. The woman at the center of last night's Houston Amber Alert has just appeared in court. That alert for a missing 10-year-old boy lasted for about an hour. He was found okay at a motel with his mother's ex-girlfriend, Nicole Harrison. But this is not Harrison's first run-in with the law. Channel 2's Taisha Walker is downtown this morning with what she has just learned. Taisha, good morning. Good morning. The kidnapping suspect went before a judge within the last hour. The judge setting Nicole Harrison's bond at $30,000 this morning. You are an average risk on a third degree felony, so I'm going to set your, um, I'm going to set your bond at $30,000. 
Harrison is charged with kidnapping. Prosecutors say the 30 year old kidnapped her ex girlfriend's 10 year old son and checked into a Greens Point motel with him yesterday. Joshua Marin's mother reported him missing and an Amber Alert was soon issued. Joshua was later found safe and reunited with his mother. In court this morning, morning we learned that Harrison was out on bond for felony possession of a controlled substance. That prior charge, along with the new kidnapping charge, led the judge this morning to set her bond high at $30,000. We know the judge also set bond conditions, telling Harrison that she's not allowed to have any contact with her ex-girlfriend or her 10-year-old child. Reporting live from downtown, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Taisha, for that update. New this morning, a family is safe after a fire forced them outside of their home late last night in Northeast Houston. This all happened on Wood Smoke Drive right near Crystalwood. We're told the daughter got up to use the restroom and she says she heard some sort of popping noises. She then alerted her family and everyone got out safe before those flames spread to some of the rooms. Firefighters say the family did not have any smoke detectors inside. The cause of that fire remains under investigation. Only on two, a local audio video tech says he needs help finding the thieves who stole about $25,000 worth of his gear. Jason Lampasinskis tells us his equipment was in a trailer at a storage facility in Cyprus and was stolen just over a week ago. Cameras caught the thieves in the act hooking up the trailer to their truck and speeding off. Lampasinskis says he needs this uh, equipment for his work. I actually do this professionally for a church, but uh, this is all my personal equipment that I just use on the side to help out bands or, uh, you know, make a little bit extra here and there, you know, to help out my family. He's asking anyone who's seen the truck or the trailer to please call police. Breaking this morning for Decision 2020, New York Democrat Michael Bloomberg has qualified for this week's Democratic debate. Wednesday's debate will be Bloomberg's first appearance with rival Democrats on a major stage. Bloomberg's poll numbers have jumped since he spent $400 million of his own money to promote his campaign. The debate is Wednesday night at 8. Channel 2 Sion Rhodes is heading to Nevada for that debate, so make sure you stay with Channel 2 this week for those live reports from Sion. A jury deliberations begin today in the high-profile Harvey Weinstein rape trial. The former Hollywood producer is accused of using his powerful position to force women into sex. He has denied the charges against him, uh, claiming that the encounters were consensual. Historic flooding is continuing to cause problems in parts of Mississippi this week, with floodwaters reaching five feet in some areas. Hundreds of folks have had to leave their homes for higher ground. Community leaders say the threat is not over as the floodwater continues to flow. And to make matters worse, they're expecting more rain. Up to 1,000 homes could be affected. Right now, folks are being told, of course, to avoid the flooded areas until further notice. A Florida man is under arrest this morning after police say he got into a fight with Taylor Swift's dad while breaking into Scott Swift's apartment. Swift was just getting back to his $4 million penthouse when he says that he caught Terrence Hoover going inside and that's when the fight broke out. The suspect got away but was caught and later identified by Swift in a lineup. His mother says this is simply a misunderstanding. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and he didn't mean any harm, and he didn't have any intention of stealing or hurting anybody. Hoover has a court hearing today on those charges. He th has a history of burglary and kidnapping. Taylor Swift was not with her father when that break-in happened. The Rockets could be getting a couple of new teammates. Ah, the rumor mill's going, and it says we've got forwards Damari Carroll and Jeff Green coming to H-Town. Uh, around the time the news broke, Carroll tweeted, stay positive, keep grinding every day. He's with the Spurs right now, apparently agreed to a contract buyout. Green uh, is a free agent. They're often called milk's favorite cookie. That's right. But what do you dip your Oreos in? Besides milk? Um, the answer given in a crossword <laughs> puzzle. Got some folks fired up this morning. Wait till you hear what they're putting their Oreos in, Britta. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. So we have a cold front on the way. It's moving through Dallas right now. We have some showers in town, big changes on the way. So what does that mean for Mardi Gras weekend? Well, we know we're going to have a great time, but we need to make sure we're prepared for the weather. Details on your forecast coming up. 
And time saver traffic. Things starting to get a little busier on area roadways, but visibility continues to be good. We'll take a look at some of the trouble spots around town, plus an updated look at your drive times into downtown. That's all coming up in a matter of minutes. Please do stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you? Yes. All right, welcome back. Take a look at what's going on area wide. Uh, not too bad. We're starting to see a couple of spots where things are slowing down a little bit. 146 in Baytown, con some construction delays around Alexander Drive. We've got a bridge that's uh, seeing a little construction, so delays associated with that. And we are seeing the Gulf Freeway slow down a little bit. This is at Monroe. You can see traffic beginning to build a little bit. Overall, though, things are flowing pretty nicely on area roadways. Take a look at 288 at Airport, beginning to slow down a little bit. No big surprises there. This time of the morning, it just kind of happens that way. So your drive time, a few minutes delayed into Paraline or in from Paraline, but still 14 minutes. That's doable. Woodlands Drive is 28 minutes and Kingwood, you've got a 20 minute, 26 minute drive into downtown. Britta. And Eric, we're off to not a bad start. Uh, fog is not a huge issue this morning, uh, but we are tracking a few showers. Those rain chances, they're going up later this afternoon, so grab your umbrella. A few showers just now making their way to the loop. Shouldn't slow you down too much, but you are going to run into some wet pavement. Meanwhile, light and patchy fog for our coastal counties. It does get a little more thick directly at the coastline, and that's where we have a dense fog advisory in effect through 10 o'clock this morning. Coming up next, I'll time out that cold front because, Amy, we are in for a big temperature drop. We're pushing 80 degrees today. Let's talk about the 50s. It's Ooh, coming our way. I thought we were just going to skip all that and move no, right into spring. No, no, no. Right? It's a treat just for you. <laughs> all right, thanks. Hey, that fairy tale wedding might be possible after all. Disney is launching a new line of princess-inspired wedding gowns. Allure Bridals is designing 16 dresses, reflecting the personality and taste of characters like Tiana, Ariel, Jasmine, Pocahontas, and Cinderella. So all of the dresses will be unveiled this April during New York Bridal Fashion Week. After that, they're set to go on sale at Kleinfeld Bridal Stores in New York. Prices will range from $1,200 to $10,000. So we've got no word on whether Disney will offer tuxedos for those real world Prince Charming. <laughs> I'm sure that's next. So, you know, nobody can tell. Just wear the same one you wore to the last wedding. Exactly. Hey, there are a lot of funky food combinations that might make you question people's taste buds. But a recent USA Today crossword puzzle has really fired up some folks. Stay with me. One person wrote to the publication, to the buffoons behind the USA Today crossword puzzle, today's clue for 10 down was cookie that some people eat with mustard. The answer was Oreo. <laughs> And this person was confused, to say the least. He wants to know who these some people are, <laughs> and he wants a refund for the 14 cents worth of Altoids he had to use to get rid of that taste when he tried it. <laughs> so Oreo responded to the tweet saying, they are now adding mustard to the list of unusual things that people dip Oreos in. I would be just as confused and frustrated if you're I good at crossword too. puzzles. That you're like, no, that can't be. It can't yeah, be. This, there's no way. I would wonder why. letters. Someone would think. I told producer Dakota that I would try it on set, but we could not scrounge up some Oreos from our break room. <laughs> I was going to say, do we have any? I there? know, no. no. We've got breakfast cookies. But we, we have mustard. We have, <laughs> have, mustard. We have Cheez Its, which Condiments. I eat frequently. Yeah. yeah. Halfway so. there. Hey. Try it. You might like it. There's a CVS up the street. We can try it after. <laughs> not going to try it. <laughs> You're like, nope. All right. Thank you, Amy. Coming up, the race to fund the Olympics. Who's headed to the Los Angeles to help raise money for the $7 billion budget? Time right now. 613. Marty Card. Time right now is 615. Breaking news this morning. New York Democrat Michael Bloomberg has qualified for the NBC debate in Nevada this week. This is a big move for the candidate who has dropped 400 million of his own dollars on a massive ad campaign. NBC's Tracy Potts is in Washington, D.C. this morning with what this means for tomorrow's debate and for decision 2020. Tracy, good morning. He has a new twist for both tonight. Good morning, everyone. And that 400 million is more than all the other candidates combined. And they have been criticizing Bloomberg, not only for the money that he's put into this race, into the ads that he's running everywhere, uh, but also for his record uh, with African Americans, with the controversial stop and frisk policy when he was mayor of New York City, uh, with the lawsuits from women uh, in his business that he says there was no wrongdoing there. 
Um, even though some of those lawsuits were settled, uh, Bloomberg has defended his record working with women. Now he'll do it publicly on a national stage for the first time. These are questions that the candidates have been asking. The moderators will likely be asking tonight as Bloomberg enters the debates, but not the race. Still not on the ballot in Nevada. He's waiting for Super Tuesday. Tanaya. Thank you, Tracy. Again, that debate goes down tomorrow night, 8 p.m. our time. You will be able to see it right here on Channel 2. President Trump's headed to California. He's meeting with organizers for the 2028 Olympic Games. He's also expected to attend some fundraising events, including one in Beverly Hills. Right now, the 2028 Olympic budget is set close to $7 billion. Well, it's one of the biggest names in football, is one of the biggest names in football looking to make a move. The NFL's free agency period begins in a month. The Patriots apparently haven't even started negotiating with Tom Brady. And he hasn't shown any signs he wants to retire. Ten teams are showing signs they may want him on their squad, like the Raiders. Apparently willing to write Tom Brady a two-year, $60 million contract. Wow. Oh. We will see what happens with that. Yeah, I mean, there's a few examples of great quarterbacks, like, a, like Joe Montana went mm -hmm. to the Chiefs at the very end. And who knows? Maybe it would happen, but I don't know. I'm not a football expert. We'll have to no. wait and see. We will see in the next yeah. month or so. I'm trying to get my head around $30 million it's, for a year's worth of work. And it's only like a, a dozen games or so. But but if Jeff Bezos woke up with his money, he'd be freaking out. So true. You know, <laughs> everything's <laughs> everything's relative, relative, right? Yeah. yeah. You're exactly right. How's right. traffic? Well, it's okay. Traffic is really? good. Yeah, I mean, we're we doing gotta... well. You know, we're in the six o'clock hour, and you know, we continue to be crash free at this particular time. I'm probably doing it myself, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's I know talk. once you hit six o'clock, it's like ah, uh, it can get a little iffy. Exactly, but at least we don't have any fog. Yes, that's a huge so. help. So fog is not an issue this morning. Uh, we are tracking a few scattered showers pushing into the metro area. The best chance of rain is actually this afternoon. So grab your umbrella, be prepared for that. Meanwhile, we are waking up to. 71 degrees. My goodness, it is warm out there. Uh, we typically would have afternoon highs in the mid 60s, so it's a very mild start. Notice that our tower camera moving up and down a little bit. We do have a little bit of a breeze coming in right off the Gulf. That's pumping in that heat and humidity. Also, it's pushing in the sea fog. So sea fog is an issue directly at the coast. The you know farther you work your way into the coastal counties, it does improve. Only light patchy fog for Galveston County right now, away from the coast. But the island itself, you're under a dense fog advisory in until 10 a.m. This afternoon, upper 70s, 80 degrees, a 30% chance of widely scattered showers. Isolated thunderstorms are possible. We're kind of working our way up to the cold front that's going to move through later tonight. So getting the kids out the door, it's going to be warm today. Shorts and t-shirts, give them that umbrella. Your shower chance is going up by lunchtime, just still at about 10, 20%. But for after school pickup, we'll have a few showers moving through. I want to pause the clock at 5 p.m. Look at our northwest counties. That temperature drop behind the cold front, you drop down to the 50s. So you're definitely going to notice it. We'll have that drop in temperature here in the metro area between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight. And that sets the stage for a very different Wednesday. Uh, that cold front's going to stall out just to the south of us. Right now, the cold front itself is in Dallas. And as it stalls off to the south of us, we're working in all that Pacific moisture. It's riding up over the front. That is going to create drizzle, light rainfall, cloudy skies, and chilly temperatures. Thursday is going to be really soggy, kind of a raw day. The good news is we clear out the skies for Friday into the weekend and we do have a slight warm up. This ridge of high pressure will be off to our east so that will allow our temperatures to get back to the 60s. So at least it won't be cold but it's going to be seasonally cool for Mardi Gras weekend. 80 degrees this afternoon here right before that cold front rolls through. We'll be dropping down to the 50s behind the front. Tomorrow the majority of the day is in the 50s. It's going to be a cold Thursday with scattered rain showers across the area and then we clear out the skies as we head into this weekend. Eric over to you. All right. Those Mardi Gras revelers are going to be happy with the weather this weekend, I think, Britta. Thank you very much for that. We are starting to see some volume delays out there, so let's take a look at uh, the usual suspects, shall we? This is the North Freeway, 32 miles per hour as you approach the Shepherd Curve. It is looking a little sluggish as you approach West Road there, but no traffic trouble in terms of stalled vehicles, in terms of crashes, so we're looking good on the North Freeway if you're coming in from the Woodlands. If you're coming in from Kingwood, you do have a slowdown as you approach I-10, as you approach downtown, but still flowing 
going fairly nicely, 21 miles per hour as you're moving behind the GRB in downtown. Elsewhere, we're starting to see things build a little bit on the Katy Freeway. Overall, though, still moving along nicely. Probably is not going to pay to take the managed lanes on the Katy Freeway right now because your inbound drive time is only 27 minutes. That's really no delay whatsoever. In fact, our inbound drive times are starting to look slow in from Pearland, 19 minutes there. But for the most part, nothing surprising as far as the morning commute goes, and we'd like to see that. So do drive safely if you're headed out the door shortly, and do have a great Tuesday. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. One of the largest dairy farms in the country might be getting new life breathed into it. But first, it's being milked for what it's got. Channel 2's Angelica Spanos live in New York this morning. It is dairy farmers who are looking to buy a piece of Dean Foods. I'll have the details on a big deal in the milk business. That's a headline from the Nasdaq market site in Times Square. See. Good morning. The world's richest man writing a big check to battle climate change. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is donating $10 billion through the Bezos Earth Fund. This aims to support scientists and groups working to battle climate change. The donation comes after some Amazon employees actually protested work last year to press the issue. Well, one of the biggest tech giants in the world is feeling the impact of the coronavirus. Plus, a major Texas dairy company couldn't be moving on from its bankruptcy filing back in November. Angelica Spanos is with us, live from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. Good morning. Oh, and tonight, good morning to you. The Dairy Farmers of America are buying a big part of Dean Foods business. The farmer-owned cooperative will pay $425 million for Dean's delivery business, 44 facilities, as well as other assets. Dean is the largest milk processor in the U.S. It filed for bankruptcy last November. The company has been hit by a decline in milk sales. Sales were down 7% in the first half of 2019. Borden, another major player in the milk business, filed for bankruptcy just last month. Well, Apple is the first major U.S. company to say sales will fall short due to coronavirus. The outbreak of the virus has limited the production of iPhones, and it's also hurt demand for Apple's products in China. The company was expecting to post revenue between 63 and 67 billion dollars this quarter. Apple says it will miss that estimate. No word yet by how much. Owen oh, Tanaya. All right, thank you for that update. There's some big news today for 160 Americans left quarantined by the coronavirus. Coming up, when those folks will be released from quarantine after being whisked away from China on emergency flights. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Our series questioning everything you think you already know. Am I doing this right? Continues today with teeth brushing. What you might have done your whole life that isn't right. Coming up. All right, looking forward to that one. Time saver traffic now. We've got a stalled vehicle westbound South Beltway at MLK. Remember, when you see a situation like this, by law, you have to move over or slow down 20 miles below posted speeds to keep this uh, situation from getting out of hand. All right, we will take a look at your area drive times coming up at the bottom of the hour. Do stay tuned for that. Britta. And we're off to an okay start this morning. Unfortunately, we have rain in the forecast, so grab your umbrella. But this is a live look at the Southwest Freeway. It's warm and breezy. We're waking up to 70 degrees. That is coming to a crashing halt, so enjoy the warm day today. I'll let you know when that temperature drop is going to move in with our cold front and how much rain we're expecting. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Breaking news this morning, a young woman is expected to survive after being shot multiple times overnight. How she was connected to the gunman who is still on the loose this morning. The Boy Scouts of America files for bankruptcy. The stunning news overnight as the organization grapples with its ongoing sex abuse scandal. A horrific crash to end the Daytona 500. The last curve of the last lap. The latest on Ryan Newman after the fiery wreck and what the driver who caused it is saying. And the price of wine is expected to tumble. We're going to tell you how much less you may be paying for how long and why. And it's National Drink Wine Day, we said earlier, That's so right. perfect timing. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> 6.30 now on a Tuesday morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. I'm Owen Conflenty. Good morning. Eric Braid, how are we doing out there? We are doing well. Uh, stalled vehicle out there. That's the only issue we've got going on. And when that's our worst problem, we're doing okay, especially when it's the 6 o'clock hour here in Houston, because that's when traffic gets kind of crazy around here. Amen. Yep, and we're expecting more rain today. So grab your umbrella. Right now, it's not that bad. We just have a few light showers 
across town, tracking some fog at the coast. You don't have to worry about bundling up. It's 70 degrees. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's February, and we're waking up to 70 degrees. We're going to be pushing 80 as we go into the afternoon. Take a live look at Exact Track radar. So we have these light showers. A lot of this not even reaching the ground, but don't be caught off guard if you see some wet pavement. We'll see more rain as we go into the afternoon. Right now, it's right over the loop and the beltway, pushing out towards the east side. So get ready for a few showers. They're going to be in Baytown over the next half hour or so. Meanwhile, light patchy fog for our coastal counties. As you get to the direct coastline, your visibility does drop, and we do have a dense fog advisory for the islands until 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll see some improvements with the fog once that cold front arrives. It's moving through Dallas right now. It's going to push through the metro area, area later this evening. So ahead of it, about a 30% chance of widely scattered showers, maybe a rumble of thunder, and a lot of cloudy skies. We'll time out the cold front, let you know when we'll feel the temperature drop here in Houston coming up. Eric, over to you. All right, time to traffic. Now, I told you about this before our last commercial break. This is on the South Beltway, westbound, right at MLK. We've got a stalled vehicle. You can see it here on the inset. Uh, it is on the left shoulder, but traffic is racing by. Want to remind you guys, by law here in Texas, you have to move over one lane or slow down to 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limits whenever you see blue or amber flashing lights in a situation like this. So just be aware of that. Bear in mind, you want to keep uh, the people that are dealing with a stalled vehicle like this as safe as possible in a relatively dangerous situation. Southwest Freeway at Chimney Rock seeing sluggish traffic. No big surprise here. It is the six o'clock hour and traffic is getting a little bit congested. Our inbound drive times are starting to show some delay, but nothing out of the ordinary. So if you're heading out the door shortly, no big surprises for you on your way into work or school this morning. Keep you posted as things do change. Back to you. All right, Eric, thank you. 632 now to the breaking news we've been following all morning out of the Cypress area. Deputies are telling us a woman was shot uh, multiple times by her ex-boyfriend. We're told that woman is in surgery right now and she is expected to survive. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli is live on the scene just off Grand Road in Creekway Drive. So, Vincent, what kind of car did this guy get away in? Tonight, detectives say the gunman took off in a white Jeep. They say this started as an argument but ended with shots fired. Overnight gunfire shatters the peace at the Cypress apartment complex. Harris County Sheriff's deputies respond. Upon their arrival, they found a 20-year-old female who had multiple gunshot wounds. Detectives believe a man in his early 20s shot his 20-year-old ex-girlfriend multiple times. It ain't no firecracker. Neighbor Demetrius Hudson heard the shots fired. And when you heard those gunshots in your neighborhood, what was going through your mind? I'm like, this is a nice neighborhood. I don't know what the... I don't know why it's gunshots. Detectives say this started as an argument, then things escalated. The suspect started shooting at the woman while they were on this balcony. I don't know why, you know what I'm saying, someone would shoot, you know what I'm saying, somebody that supposedly love anything like that. Bullet struck the woman in her stomach and legs. Right now she's in surgery at the hospital. It ain't never worth shooting somebody. It ain't never worth shooting somebody at all. Detectives say after the shooting, the suspect took off in a white Jeep. And now knowing that it happened right across the way, what are your thoughts? Anywhere you live ain't safe. I mean, anything could happen. So you just got to be, be aware and just be safe. Now investigators are collecting evidence that will lead to the shooter. And take another look at this balcony. This is where the gunman pulled the trigger. Authorities say the woman lives here, not her ex-boyfriend. Right now, authorities are working to gather a detailed suspect description. Stay tuned. For now, reporting live in Cyprus, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Uh, Vincent, thank you. Breaking news from north of Willis. A horrific crash where a man ended up with a fence post going through his abdomen. We're told the man managed to call police to report the crash. He says he hit a deer and then ran off the road and hit a fence off Highway 75 near Shepherd Hill Road. Paramedics found the man with a two-inch fence post going through his abdomen. It took about 30 minutes to free the man. Emergency crews had to cut him out of his truck. He's now in the hospital, said to be in critical condition. Time right now is 6.35. New this morning, police say a man is expected to survive after being shot nine times in southwest Houston. We're told officers found the 23-year-old victim tending to his wounds in the driveway of a home on Redding near Bel Air. According to detectives, the man told them he was a robbery victim, but detectives say parts of his story just aren't adding up. So far, no arrests have been made, and they do plan on speaking with that man at the hospital.
Also new, a home in North Harris County is a total loss after a fast-moving fire overnight as the flames come shooting from the roof at the home on Ash Meadow and Ella Boulevard. Everyone inside the home got out safely. Firefighters eventually put the flames out and they have no word yet on what caused the fire. Coronavirus concerns continue to mount as the virus continues to spread overseas. But here in Houston, there are still no signs of the virus. In California, some 160 people quarantined after being evacuated from Wuhan, China, will be released from that quarantine this morning. A second group of people will be released on Thursday. Two people from those evacuees have been diagnosed with coronavirus, but no others have shown any signs. Around the world, the number continues to grow, with the worst situation being in China. More than 73,000 people are infected by the coronavirus. Almost 1,900 have died, including the director of the Wuching Hospital in Wuhan. China says it plans to designate medical workers who have died from the virus as martyrs. 636 breaking news this morning. The Boy Scouts of America has filed for bankruptcy. The move comes in the wake of a wave of lawsuits by men who say they were sexually abused by scout leaders as boys. The filing is an attempt to survive a possible $1 billion compensation fund. The organization may have to sell off some of its properties and campsites to be able to stay afloat. An emergency meeting of federal judges is happening today in our nation's capital. They're meeting over concerns that the U.S. Justice Department is intervening in politically sensitive cases. The meeting comes amid demands for the Attorney General to resign following his involvement in a case of President Trump's friend Roger Stone. Stone was sent to be sentenced, possibly up to nine years, before the president tweeted his displeasure over the case and the Justice Department rescinded their recommendation. Stone's sentencing is now set for Thursday. Well, a lot of you still might be talking about this huge crash at the Daytona 500. Ryan Newman leading in the final lap before the massive fiery wreck. This morning, the extent of his injuries are still unclear. A statement was released on his Twitter page last night that his injuries are considered non-life-threatening. But they didn't really go into details about just how bad things were. Denny Hellman passed Newman to win the Daytona 500 his second time in two years. He spoke after that race saying the night was not about his win. It's a weird balance of you know excitement and happiness for yourself, but obviously uh, someone's health and their family's you know bigger than any win in any, any sport. So um, you know we're, we're just hoping for the best. President Trump tweeted after that wreck saying, quote, praying for Ryan Newman, a great and brave NASCAR driver. Another driver was at the race who bumped into Newman causing that fiery crash yesterday. He wrote on Twitter, dang, I hope Newman's okay. That is the worst case scenario and I had nowhere to go but smoke. One of NASCAR's biggest stars also tweeted about that wreck. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was brief, only writing big prayers for Newman. His father, Dale Sr., died in a wreck at the Daytona 500 on this day, 19 years ago. The hits keep coming for the Astros. The pitcher, Francis Martes, now suspended for the entire season after testing positive for performance-enhancing drugs. Major League Baseball says he tested positive for boldenone, uh, which comes uh, as a full squad. He begins practicing this week at spring training. That's where our Randy McElvoy is today. Hello from West Palm Beach, Florida. Astros spring training with a new look yesterday. Pitchers and catchers had camped to themselves for the first four days, but that all changed yesterday. They officially got the band back together again as full squad workouts officially started here under Dusty Baker. Day one, always a little chaotic as the new schedule kicks off. They had a morning meeting and then a two and a half hour workout all over the complex where they had batting practice, took some, and some fielding drills as well, also some conditioning. With the backlash coming in daily across the Big leagues, these Astros know they need to earn back respect with people. And simply put, they all say it starts with winning. We are truly remorseful and, and you know sorry for what we what we've done. But you know I think the biggest thing, like I said last week, was we go out there and win, and we're not we're not only earning the respect to a lot of people, but we'll get the respect out from ourselves as well. So winning is the biggest thing for us. We just have to to stay together and, and play good baseball. I mean, it sounds simple, but we we really need to go out there and and play uh, good baseball. The Astros certainly love the makeup of this baseball team in this clubhouse. And also, I want to add rave reviews coming in already for new manager Dusty Baker. 
he's really getting to know these players and they're getting to know him as well and they feel like it's going to be a very good fit lack of respect certainly not a factor there one player not in camp pitchers at green key is expected though by this weekend with the Astros in West Palm Beach Florida Randy McAvoy KPRC Channel 2 Sports all right thank you Randy let's go to Britta now with a check on our forecast yeah a little warm and breezy this morning we're tracking a few showers grab your umbrella we're going to have more showers as we go into the afternoon because we're tracking this cold front that is leaving Dallas so this morning we're ahead of that cold front a few spotty showers across town they shouldn't slow you down too much but don't be surprised when you see a little bit of wet pavement meanwhile getting the kids out the door to school it's warm out there. We're at 70 degrees. We'll be pushing 80 degrees as you pick them up. So make sure that they have shorts, t-shirts and their umbrella. After lunchtime, our rain chance goes up to about 30%. But as the cold front moves in this evening, not only do our rain chances continue to go up, but look at this temperature drop. Eric, we dropped to the 50s behind that cold front. I'll time out that temperature drop here in Houston coming up. Over to you. Ah, those typical winter fronts here in Houston. They kind of mess with your head a little bit. All right, let's talk a little bit about traffic. We're seeing the normal slow spots around town. We also have an accident inbound on the Katy Freeway. This is at Taylor, well inside the loop as you're approaching downtown. This is what it looks like. We've got left lanes blocked here, and the buildup is beginning to grow. Back towards Studemont, toward Heights Boulevard. So the Katy Freeway drive in is not looking all that hot right now. We still have a solid vehicle on the south beltway. This one right here is uh, on the westbound lane, right at MLK. Be very careful in this situation. You've got people trying to get the stalled vehicle off the road and you definitely want to be careful. Make sure nothing bad happens. Drive times right now starting to look a little slow. That Katy Freeway drive time growing with the accident near downtown. Elsewhere, just your normal volume delays. Back to you guys. Eric, thank you. Uh, there's some good news for Selena fans after Fiesta de la Flor was canceled. Coming up, the celebration that's going to honor the Tejano Queen's legacy that's coming to San Antonio. And next, are you brushing your teeth right? The five things dentists say most people are doing, and it's not right. <laughs> A big home decorating retailer is on its last leg. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis with what you need to know about Pier One's financial problems. In your consumer headlines this morning, Pier One is going bust. The home decor company says it filed for bankruptcy Monday after racking up $59 million in losses. They had to cut a deal with lenders to get a quarter billion dollars in financing, and now the company's looking for a buyer. Pier One had already been in the process of closing hundreds of stores, but it still has about 500 locations up and running. That includes 13 right here in the Houston area. Well, listen up, wine lovers. The price of wine is expected to fall. This is according to a new state of the wine industry report. California growers have a surplus of grapes and demand for wine has fallen. That's because a lot more people are drinking those hard seltzers. Mm. So the cheaper prices they say could last up to three years. The oversupply will also allow for better quality juice in lower priced bottles and may encourage millennials to become more consistent wine buyers. They hope. This is all according to that report. Walmart's e-commerce sales grew a whopping 41% in the third quarter of 2019. That will be all the buzz at the big, big box retailers investor meeting today at the New York Stock Exchange. The Bentonville, Arkansas based company is spending heavily to compete with Amazon. Well, today investors will be looking at the fourth quarter and whether e-commerce is finally turning a profit. Much of that sales growth comes from Walmart's grocery pickup and delivery business, which a lot more people are doing. Staying. So convenient. Mm -hmm. yep. I yes, very convenient for a lot of people. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's go to Britta now with a check on our forecast. Britta, it is February. 71 degrees, <laughs> right? This is uh, not going to last too long. No, so enjoy it. If you prefer the more seasonable weather, don't worry. It's on the way. We're expecting that cooler weather to move in, in fact, within less than 24 hours. We have a cold front that's moving through Dallas, and that's going to dramatically change our weather. So this morning, we are waking up to 71 degrees. It's breezy out there. Do not forget your umbrella. We have a few spotty showers, and we're also tracking some fog. Right now, it's pretty light and patchy directly uh, in our coastal counties, but if you move to the coast, 
coastline, that's where it drops. So we do have a dense fog advisory for the islands until 10 o'clock this morning. Meanwhile, this afternoon, we're going to pump in the heat. Close to 80 degrees this afternoon, a 30% chance of rainfall. So again, our shower chance is going up as we go throughout the day. Here's a look at our future cast model. I'll pause the clock at school drop off. A few showers possible. They're not going to slow you down too much, but don't be surprised it's surprised if you see some wet pavement. Dress your kids in shorts and t-shirts because we're pushing the temperatures this afternoon. And then that cold front will bring in the colder air. Look at this drop. We're down to the 50s by 6 p.m. in College Station. That drop in temperature will happen here in the metro area between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight. The cold front itself is actually going to stall out to the south of us. As I said, it's through Dallas right now, but as it moves down to our south, it stalls out over the Gulf, and then we work in all that moisture on top of it from the southwest. That creates overrunning. So as we go into Thursday, it's going to be cloudy. Drizzle will be around some light rainfall and chilly temperatures. It's going to be a pretty big shift in our weather pattern. Luckily, as we head into the weekend, we clear up the skies. It's still going to be on the cool side, but it won't be cold. Most importantly, we have sunshine in the forecast for this weekend. So 80 degrees today. Again, most of our rainfall will be tonight, while some scattered showers, much cooler temperatures for tomorrow. Thursday is going to be soggy. Light drizzle, light rainfall, temperatures only in the 50s. Thankfully, we do clear out for Friday into the weekend, but we hold on to those cooler temperatures. But most importantly, Eric, we're looking good for Mardi Gras. Over to you. All right, that's what's most important the weekend, at least to most people anyway. Time to have traffic now. Notice some oranges, some reds on the traffic map. We've got building volume, and along with the higher volume, you always get a better chance for crashes, and we've got a couple of them to talk about. One of them continues to be on the KD Freeway inbound right at Taylor, so as you're approaching downtown, a couple of left lanes block, things really sluggish on the KD Freeway as a result, so bear that in mind. If you're coming in from the west side and this is part of your morning drive, give yourself some extra time this morning. North Freeway at Gulf Bank. We've got an accident reported at the Shepherd Curve. You can see a bit of a delay all the way back to the Beltway. So give yourselves extra time coming in from the Woodlands too because traffic is getting sluggish. That's always a sluggish spot around town, but factor in an accident and it just makes it that much worse. 288 at Orem. It is a parking lot. No accident to speak of, but it's just a parking lot. That is the typical go of it in from Pearland every single morning. Thanks to all the construction. Eventually though, it will come to an end, I believe, this summer. In the meantime, you've got a 27-minute ride into Pear in from Pearland. That's a 17-minute delay. 42 minutes in from Katy. That delay continues to grow. And 36 minutes in from the Woodlands. That, too, is growing. Back to you guys. Thank you, Eric. Well, there are five mistakes that most people make while brushing their teeth. Even dentists admit that, that they do it, too, sometimes. Health reporter Haley Hernandez is here to reveal what we all need to do while brushing. Good yeah. morning. Good morning, guys. So this is really important because neglecting your dental health can lead to infections, which can get into your bones, your blood supply, and that can lead to permanent damage. So in addition to seeing your dentist twice a year, blah, 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 make sure that you're doing all of these things right. According to the World Dental Federation, between 60 to 90 percent of kids and nearly 100 percent of adults have tooth decay. To fight it, Dr. Judson Wells from UT Health says divide your mouth into four quadrants and brush each for 30 seconds. 30, 30, 30, and 30 seconds to give you two minutes of brushing. Even dentists say that's longer than you think, and Wells doesn't think anyone is doing it right. If you're determined to have better dental habits, use a timer and brush for two minutes total. Switch your toothbrush every three to four months and don't use a hard brush. Actually, Wells says go for extra soft. And if you're using a medium or a hard bristle toothbrush, you can do damage. Don't use a sawing motion on your teeth either. That's too much friction on your enamel. Instead, you really want to stop on every individual tooth and just brush in small circles with the bristles aimed at the gum line. Now, another mistake that people make is avoiding the areas of the mouth that bleed. Dr. Wells says that's the opposite of what you should be doing since inflammation that causes bleeding can be corrected with brushing and flossing. So give that area extra attention for about two to three weeks, he says, and then the issue should resolve on its own. All right. Got to pay attention. <laughs> Lots to remember, Lots to even remember. with just a simple I task, right? right? I have Keep the electric clean. one, so I don't know how long it goes. I'm going to And he does I'm do the timer, those. see if yeah. it goes for a full two minutes. Yeah. Oh, you're really doing it. Good idea. My note today. Thank you, Haley. A celebration honoring Tejano legend Selena's legacy is coming to San Antonio. Suzette and A.B. Quintanilla, along with San Antonio's mayor, are scheduled to announce an event today 
at the Alamo Dome. Now, as of right now, it's still unclear what this event will be, but fans have speculated it could be the replacement for the Fiesta de la Flor Festival after that festival in Corpus Christi was canceled a few weeks ago, a few months ago, excuse me. We'll be sure to keep you updated on the announcement on air and online. 652, a final check of traffic and weather this morning in just a moment. An argument on an apartment balcony in Cyprus takes a violent turn after deputies say a man shot his ex-girlfriend. And they've been looking for him all morning in northwest Harris County. Let's check in with our Vincent Crivelli live from the scene. Vincent. Oh, and Tanaya, good morning. Right now, the woman is in surgery at the hospital. She is expected to survive. Meanwhile, authorities are trying to track down her ex-boyfriend. Detectives say around 2.15 this morning, the ex-boyfriend, a man in his 20s, came to his ex-girlfriend's home, and they began to argue. The argument continued outside on a balcony, and that's where authorities say the shooter opened fire, bullet striking the victim at least twice. Then detectives say the gunman took off in a white Jeep. Right now, detectives are continuing to gather a suspect description they're also trying to find out what the motive was for this shooting. Reporting live in Cyprus, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. Top stories this morning. Breaking this morning, just north of Willis, a bizarre crash where a man ended up impaled by a pole. Police say he managed to call them for help. He told them that he hit a deer, ran off the road, hit a fence off Highway 75 near Shepherd Hill Road. Officers say it took them about a half an hour to free him. A woman accused of kidnapping a 10-year-old boy and sparking an Amber Alert appeared in court this morning. Police arrested Nicole Harrison and reunited the child with his mother. The child was found at a West Houston motel yesterday. A judge has set her bond at the $30,000 for Harrison, that is. Uh, Harrison is the mother's ex-girlfriend. Presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg will be on the debate stage tomorrow in Las Vegas. He qualified after receiving 19% of support from an NPR PBS NewsHour Martis poll. This will be Bloomberg's first appearance in a Democratic presidential primary debate. All right, time to for traffic now. A couple of incidents still ongoing here on area roads. We've got the typical volume delays, obviously, but uh, Katy Freeway accident at Taylor, that has cleared, but the backup remains, and hopefully we can recover from it, but at the heart of the morning drive, that's always a little bit on the dicey side. Bad news for Pearland commuters coming in. We've got a stall blocking a right lane at Belfort, so the backup there uh, right now not looking good at all. A final stop is the, the North Freeway accident at the Shepherd Curve has things a little tight there and your overall drive times uh, yeah they are beginning to build from many directions Britta and you want to make sure that you grab your umbrella we have a cold front on the way that's going to bring in a few showers it's going to be warm and muggy ahead of the front we're expecting 80 degrees today meanwhile at the coast dense fog advisory just at the direct coastline until 10 o'clock this morning our cold front will really drop our temperatures this evening that drop happening between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight so tomorrow we're in the 50s for the majority of the day enjoy spring while we have it right drink wine day cheers, cheers.